Good morning, ladies. Good morning. How are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. I um, I'm just getting ready to start pumping again. More uh, water. <sighs> what? More water. The swamp. Welcome to the swamp. Right. Okay. I want you to take a look at this picture right here. Now, what you are seeing is Nana and Daisy sparring over the toy that we have. Uh, constructed for them. Now, Nana is completely OCD'd out the over the charts OCD. She believes that that toy is hers only, even though we've made two of them, one for each dog. Nana says, no, those are my toys and you cannot have any. Well, it gets kind of funny from time to time because Daisy knows that one of those toys is hers and kind of doesn't really care what Nana thinks about Nana's OCD tendencies on wanting to have that toy for her own. And well, stuff happens. Now to add to this already silly, funny scene, one of the things that's interesting about Nana is for whatever reason, and, and we're very grateful, we're very grateful, but she's got it in her head that she does not go upstairs. She won't go up the stairs to the bedrooms up there, and it's great, we love that. However, when Daisy does get the occasion to take back part of the rope, what she does is she hauls butt. She grabs a piece and hauls butt with Nana hot in pursuit. And she will go up on those stairs, about four stairs up, and turn around and sit with the thing in her mouth watching Nana. And Nana won't go get him. <laughs> she won't go get him. She just sits there frustrated. And you bailed, huh, Daisy? Oh, You're like, I'm out. <laughs> She's interrupting your school day. She is. She's she's camera shy. She's hiding from you. No, she's not hiding from me. She's hiding from <laughs> that. <laughs> Apparently, Nana got back her toy. And Daisy bailed. All right, so as I babysit the pump, pumping water from the garage out into the nether regions uh, again, I, I, I can't help but um, think about a lot of the comments that people have been making on the channel. Oh, and by the way, I'm sorry if the hum from the pump is loud. I'm trying to talk loud so that you can hear me okay. Uh, I'll keep it short. Uh, sorry about the, the humming pump. Um, but anyway, people have been asking a lot about, you know, what doesn't this bother you? I mean, you've had all of these horrible things happen just recently when, you know, when you're talking about the, uh, the, the water and the snow and, and the chimney and all of these things, and I, I, we don't even tell you guys everything that's going on just because, frankly, there's a lot. I mean, there's stuff wrong with my truck. There's, there's all kinds of things that are going on. And a lot of you guys go, well, how can you be happy and how can you have peace? When, when all of these things are just kind of falling apart around you. And well, I gotta tell you what, first there's, there's two big parts to that, two huge parts to that. The first part is that it's just stuff. Things happen uh, and, and it's a part of life. It, you know, things are gonna break. Garages will flood. Snow will change your whatever. And it's just stuff. Our society has put far too much emphasis on things that are just plain temporary guys. That, you know, if the truck breaks, okay, I'll deal with it. You know, we may not have the funds to fix it right away, but you figure it out and you move on. But society says that you should, you know, all these things that we have, all this stuff that we surround ourselves with, that's what defines you. That's, that's what everybody sees and that's what everybody goes, wow, you have value because you've got a big house or you have value because you've got this nice truck or you have value because you have blah, blah, blah. 
fill in the blank. And it's just plain a lie. All the stuff in the world does not define who I am. All the stuff in the world should not define who you are. It's who you are that's really important. And so when, when things kind of go sideways and, and stuff breaks or you got to repair this or this happens, if you've got the right mentality, if you've got the right uh, placement, rather, of priorities, that it, these are just things. Life just happens. Garages flood. If you've got that mentality where it's like, you know what? Okay, well, we'll just deal with this. And even if I can't deal with it right this second because of money or whatever, well, you do it. You just, just figure a way and you keep going. And then it will not rule your world. If, it, if those things don't define you, then it's not going to be that big of a deal. You deal with it and you move on. And society says, no, 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 no. Those things are what's important. And I'm here to tell you folks, that's a lie. It's an absolute lie. And the second thing, the second thing that's the real reason, the bigger reason why these things don't freak us out is because all this stuff is temporary. All of this stuff is gonna go away. One, what, what is really important in your world? For me, it's my family, it's my relationships, it's my relationship with God. That's permanent and lasting and, and all of this stuff, do, do you really, let me ask you a question. When, when you're breathing your last breath, are you really gonna be sitting there wondering, man, I wish I would have got that bigger house. Man, I wish I would have worked 50 million more hours on my job so that I could afford X, Y, and Z. I really, really regret, I regret not buying all of that property and so-and-so and, and amassing this massive real estate empire. Do you really think that's what you're gonna be thinking about? My guess is it's gonna be on the people here that are truly important in your world and God. You know, if, if let's just say it this way, guys. This piece, this, I'm sitting in a lake and it's an irritation, but it doesn't define me because these things are temporary. And so I guess the encouragement would be focus on those things that, that, are, that are truly meaningful, not stuff. Focus on your relationship with God. And then all these things totally takes the pressure off. Not really that important. My relationship with God, my relationship with my family, my friends, and those who we care about, the things that are eternal. And I know this is kind of a little bit more than we usually delve into, but it's who we are. And so if you, if you know us and, and, you, and you're like, well, you know, I, I don't believe that way. Well, you know we don't cram it down your throat. This is just my opinion. This is the opinion of our family. This is how we live. And so I feel like if I didn't share this side of our life with you, then I'd also be not telling you the whole story. It wouldn't be fully true. And so there it is. That's why stuff doesn't really get under our skin too bad. I mean, we have our bad days just like everybody else. Don't get me wrong. We absolutely fall and we fail and we get upset about stupid things, but it's not what defines us. There you have it. All right, mama, let's give the people a cabin fever slash snow slash Wisconsin uh, stuck in the house update. How's your mental stability? I, I really need to know. You see all these? Hair? All the grays up there. Oh. That's where, that's, that's, you know what's causing those. Snow. Every time a snowflake falls, you get a gray hair. You get a gray hair. So, right. are you, what, what's the scoop? Where are you at? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I, if I can get outside to the barn in, you know, a couple of times a day, then I'm good. <laughs> okay, well we got everything pumped out and swept up. We got all the debris, the, the nasty dirt and grass and all the stuff that had flown or gotten pushed in here all out, but as you can see, the water's 
coming back. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna get outside and go ahead and, and, and dig the snow away from the sides of the house. So fingers crossed, we'll see. Well, this is gonna take a little bit longer than I thought, especially with the wrong kind of shovel. So I'm gonna get a better snow shovel and hopefully this will fix part of the problem. So another exciting day in the swamp. Um, but I, I think that, I think that we're gonna get to the bottom of it. Sure hope so. And that's not a metaphor. <laughs> Uh, actually, we do have a plan. We got all that snow away from the sidewalls, and, and if that helps, great. Uh, but uh, a neighbor has very kindly offered to, to loan us a, a more industrial. A, a bigger, like, well, thicker snake than what we have. To try to get it out of there. My concern is just that it's frozen, you know, wherever the end is, and then we're kind of just beating our head on the wall until it thaws out. I have that sneaky suspicion too, but it would have frozen a lot longer, or had, would, a while back, wouldn't it? I have no idea. I don't know. Anyway, no big deal, one day at a time, and um, well, I guess that'll be it for us today, and... Uh, We're gonna go build our ark. Yeah, we need to build an ark. Does anybody know where we can get a good deal on gopher wood? So I'm Brad. I'm Krista. You guys have an amazing day. Well, it looks at last they've come to some sort of agreement. Maybe a, a treaty, a, a peace offering, I don't know. But they both have their own little portion of the treat. Yay.